We all have tests that we use to determine whether someone is right for us or not. Does he make you laugh? Is he attractive? Can he spell or use grammar in his text messages? These are all tests that women in our community have told me that they use to tell if a man is right for them or not. Well, guess what? Men have tests as well. And these are some of the, the tests that men use to determine how valuable you are to them. Hi, I'm Matthew Coast, and welcome to Commitment Connection. Here are five tests that men use to determine whether or not you're a high value woman. Test number one is he pulls away. At some point, just about any man that you're really attracted to, a guy that you date, or a guy that you're in a relationship with, is going to pull away for one reason or another. What you do when he does this can determine whether he thinks you're a valuable woman that he wants something deeper with, or whether he should pull away further or even disappear altogether. So here's how you fail the test. You chase him, you freak out, you get angry at him, you attack him, or you punish him. Those are all things that will make you fail this test and make him feel like you're not that valuable, that you're not the kind of person that he wants to be with. Now, here's how you, you pass the test. You give him some space, you invite him to come back to you, and then you make him work to get you back. If you do this the right way, you'll stand out from all the other women that he's ever met and you'll feel like you're special, unique, and different. Most women lose their minds. They absolutely lose their minds when a man pulls away. Don't be one of those women if you want to continue to see him. So number two is he challenges your boundaries. So if it was up to most women to move things forward towards a romantic relationship, the population of the earth would dwindle down to almost nothing. <laughs> no, that's a little bit of a joke, but in all reality, men typically are the ones that push things forward in most situations. And so most guys know that if he wants something romantic and physical with you, he has to lead things there or it probably won't ever, ever happen, right? Most guys know this. If a guy hangs out with you and he goes on dates with you over and over and over again, and he doesn't move things forward, it probably won't ever happen unless you just get totally tired and you're like, hey, are you going to finally kiss me or something, right? Which is what happens a lot. And then you're in our community going, is this guy gay? What's going on with this guy? We have to be like, no, no, no. He's a really, really nice guy. And then you lose interest. And, and so this is what happens, right? So a guy has to push things forward. And what that means is that he's probably going to push and challenge your boundaries if he wants something romantic. And so here's how you fail this test. You let him push past your boundaries and then walk all over you. In the short term, this may make him like you, but in the long term, he'll end up losing respect for you. And he's far less likely to value you if you do this. He's less likely to feel like your relationship material, like your girlfriend material, like your wifey material, like your any of those kinds of materials if you let him push past your boundaries and get away with whatever he wants to get away with. Instead, you need to set boundaries. If it's something that you're interested in, like he's making some kind of move on you, you know, he's trying to kiss you or, you know, he's trying to touch you or something like that, but you need more time, you need to let him know that, right? There's this thing that we've talked about before where it's kind of a hard like a hard no versus a soft no. A hard no is like, no, I'm not interested. Don't do that. And a soft no is like, hey, not yet, right? Not yet, not yet. And so a lot of times women try to give off a soft no, but it comes off as a hard no. And so if you are interested and you are interested in that at some point, but not maybe not right now because you don't really know him. You need more love and connection and tenderness. You need to make sure he's the right guy. Then you need to let him know in a, a nice way that this is the situation that you're in, that you are interested in him, but it's, you're just not ready yet. It's not time yet. And if it's something that you're not willing to accept at all, you need to let him know that as well. 
So if you set and stick to your boundaries, he's far more likely to respect you and feel like you're different, unique, and special. And that's what you want. You want him to feel like you're, you're different, like you're, you're more valuable than all the other women that he's dated. So number three is he sets up a date and then waits to talk to you on the date, right? So he waits, so he sets up the date with you and then you don't hear back from a, him again until the date. This is this is a common test that a lot of guys use, believe it or not. And sometimes this isn't even a conscious thing. It's like a subconscious thing that he's doing or it's he, maybe he's old fashioned. Why? Because before social media and text messaging made it so that we were able to contact each other with you know every single second of every single day people used to set up dates, right? They'd set up a date with each other and then they would just meet each other on the date. <laughs> like that's usually what would happen back in the day. And now people are a lot more impatient because of the ability to get instant feedback and they're just sending messages back and forth. Well, a lot of high value men still date like the old way, because it weeds out a lot of women who are desperate and needy and who are trying to eat up all of his time and who need, you know, massive amounts of attention because they're not doing what I talk about and making sure that, you know, they're coming from a space of feeling like they're whole and happy and strong and worthy. And then they're, they have an abundance of connection, which are the things that you want to do. If you're not coming from that space, you might be coming from the space of being desperate and needy and clingy and trying to eat up all of his time. And he doesn't want that. He has a life and he needs someone who can fit into that life, not someone who is going to completely derail him and pull him off of course. The way to fail this test is to freak out on him, get angry at him or cancel plans at the very last minute because you haven't heard from him. Another way to fall to fail this test is to start chasing him instead of waiting for the date or waiting for him to initiate contact again. On the other hand, you you don't want to meet up with a guy if he's completely forgot about you because then you'll show up on the date and he's not even going to be there, right? And you're like, oh, I went on this date and I thought, you know, and I was listening to Matt Coast and he told me that, you know, he, that I should, you know, he, maybe it was, it was a test, right? So what's the best way to handle this? The best way to handle this is to wait until the day of and then ask him if you're still on, right? Just send him a text, quick test and say, text message and say, hey, are we still on? And that's it. That's all you have to do. If he doesn't respond, you don't go on the date. Number four is he checks to see if you're on his side. So this is kind of more of a passive way of testing, especially in the modern world of the war of the sexes. Men are looking for a woman who can actually be on their side instead of against him. The way to fail this test is to try to change him, is busting on him in front of his friends or going against him or fighting with him or any of that kind of stuff, flirting with other men in front of him, leaving him at parties or gatherings that you go to together, teaming up against him with other people or making fun of what he does or who he is. Those are all ways to kind of destroy this thing where it's called the partnership principle of being on his side of him feeling like you're, you're in this together. Like you're going to the same place together. If you want to pass the test, support him in his dreams and goals, encourage him, talk him up around his friends and family and be his cheerleader when he needs it. I've seen men who have said that they don't believe in marriage and then they ended up getting married to a woman who shows, who ended up showing him that she's really on his side. I've seen this over and over and over again because uh, many men in America, especially in America right now, but it's starting to happen all over the West, feel like they're under attack from the media, from women, and from our culture. We have a thing called the war of the sexes going on over here in the West, and it is, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But if you can be on his side, it can make a massive difference to him and the way that he sees you and he can feel and think of you as the type of woman that he wants to be forever, the forever one. So number five, 
this is the last one. He sees how you act in a situation that challenges you. So let me explain what this means. So the things that break relationships apart, they don't usually happen during the good times. It's usually during the challenging times that typically breaks people up. And a common way for men to test women is to take her to something that challenges her to see if she responds to doing, seeing how she responds to doing something that she's not really comfortable with. So this could be something simple like taking her to a sport that she's not used to playing or having her do something that she's not good at or that he's good at, but she's not really good at it. Right. So the way that you fail this is to do things like you suck at something. And so you start attacking him or other people around you. You, you blame other people or things outside of yourself for not being good at something. You lose your mind, you start freaking out and then you're, you just run off. You just run off and you're like, ah, I can't stand it. You brought me to play ping pong and I suck at it. Oh, I'm going to run. And you just start running out of there. And that is a way, great way to fail this test. So the way that you pass this test is to remain calm, be patient and allow yourself to learn something new. So just chill out, have fun with it, be playful, poke fun at yourself, just enjoy yourself and have a good time at what you're doing. So that's it for this one, if you really want to raise your value in a man's eyes,